Uh, Vipers are cars for crazy people. Let's go drive. Come on now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to feel that in the car. Uh, holy freaking fuck. And then it does a burnout at 5,500 in third gear. One hour of track time. Power mirrors don't work. Air conditioning doesn't work. Airbag doesn't exist. What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti here, and look at this 488, looking shiny, looking nice. And I have taken so many steps to try to keep this thing in one piece without really annoying customers. And part of that, like there's companies that would like restrict the ability to accelerate in the car or something like that. We've even in the past taken off these Manatinos. I've done videos on this, this here, but then people destroy the sticker on the wheel and you can't just get the sticker. So you have to end up buying a new steering wheel and it gets very expensive. Uh, so here we are, I just got the car back and this is like, I can't tell you how many like music videos and Instagram photos. I mean, it's just part of like being like the, the rental Ferrari that you end up all over the world, movies, uh, music videos, but there's things that I don't get. It's that whole G-Wagon thing. Why are you climbing on the roof? Same thing with this. This car just came back the other day and I mean, it's now nicey nice. If you remember my video from yesterday, how you can like hear the, the paint on that E-Class, but it's nice and smooth, looks buttery. No real scratches apparent. I mean, it's gonna need some, you can definitely see some scratches, but if you saw what this thing looked like when it came back, this car came back from these guys. They did 500 miles in a day. And it just, we looked and we're like, uh, sorry, I gotta say something. It's not like somebody leaned against the car for a second and it's like, oh yeah, there's a little scuff right there, we'll buff out. The entire car was like somebody wore a Velcro jacket and rolled all over it. It's just like, what? It's like, hey, we got some scuffs here. They're like, I don't see anything. I'm like, like it's, it's like the scene from uh, Liar Liar. You scratched my car! Where? Right there! Oh, there. That's already there. <sighs> and you show them that and they're like, no, no, we don't see that. Oh, that was like that. And it totally wasn't like that. And we totally have video, uh, photos of it not like that. But it just wasn't worth the argument. It's just like a frustrating thing. It's the front, the back, the entire car had to get detailed now which is not standard. We wash the cars in between rentals. We detail them once a month or so, but to bring a car back and specifically require a detail because you're rolling all over it, it's, I don't understand people's desire. When I see a car, I'm like, that's fun. I want to drive that. I want to like sit in that. I want to like make engine noises, whatever. Like all of those I can see. The, I want to climb on top of that means like, I just don't understand. Why can't you stand next to the car? Why, like, what does going up and rolling around on the hood do for your artistic interpretation of what you have to tell people or what message you're trying to relay? Mind boggling, I swear. It's frustrating and like, like for smoking in the car, I can charge people for smoking in the car, right? The car stinks. We have to use our like scent bomb machine, which is a big old thing here, which like, I don't know what it does, but it makes it stop smelling. But like that, we have to charge people. We have to do this whole process. We can't rent it out immediately. Like I got in that Mercedes the other day. I felt like I was getting high. I took my kid in the, in the Mercedes and like, why does it smell so bad? I'm like, eh, just give it a couple of years. But either way, uh, I've taken that precaution. So aside from telling people uh, what not to do and, and trying to, to remove people's ability to turn traction control off and all that, I've also taken other steps like this front bumper here, and I'm sure it's got some scratches on it, even with the lift system. Mind you, let's see. There you go. See, some scratches underneath. Now, mind you, I had this car for two years and 1,500 miles myself. Not even the faintest scratch on that. So it is possible to drive this thing, drive it hard, drive it all over, and not scratch it. But uh, I have now, this is a, a new bumper, the other one's over there, 
I have taken steps with this to A, every Ferrari we buy, every Lamborghini, we always get the lift system option. Unfortunately, this has a lift system, doesn't prevent people from scratching it, but it is what it is. Now, I've also changed the wheels on this car uh, after the last accident. And why do they change the wheels? Well, look at this. See here, look at the, uh... can you see that? Can you see that? That is not part of the tire design where the Michelin is worn away. But what that does prevent is now the tire is touching the curb before the wheel. You have this little gap in here. So that lip on the tire prevents the wheels from getting scuffed. And these wheels are all money right now. And I love that. See all this like protection you have. So the wheels are now, I mean, this one, even on the back is even more, uh, you have a big fat lip. But if you look at all my, <laughs> let's go to the graveyard of Ferrari parts back here, but like it's much less likely to get damaged. I mean, here, this is a perfect example. You know what? This sticks out a little bit more, but not much. All of my other wheels seem to get tagged. And now that I look at the, and uh, so this doesn't count because these are off the rim. But I mean, when you jack a curb, it's going to look like that. Let's see what we got. That's one, two. These are the painted versions. I think these were even repaired afterwards. I don't know. These wheels just, I remember them getting damaged uh, more frequently than the, up, the upgraded wheels or the updated wheels. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the eighth? One, two. Oh, there's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here it is. All right. X marks the spot. But I've got far too many. I've got 12 wheels for one Ferrari. That should say something. And uh, just not my intention to have 12 wheels for one Ferrari, but it is what it is. And then I've got eight wheels for my Bentley. I've got four on there, four over here. I've got extra McLaren wheels. I got McLaren brakes. I got, I, I, I'm still waiting to do something. I don't know why I'm, I'm, this is the biggest digression ever, but I want to take this SLR McLaren brake set that I have, and I want to put it on a project car like I maybe my Corvette maybe the Evo I don't know I, I just feel like that would be cool spare Ferrari bumpers I don't know it's it's a frustrating thing right it's it's frustrating to try to figure out ways to prevent people from damaging the car because it just costs extra time and extra money that it shouldn't if you just rent the car and drive it and enjoy it and not hit anything life is so nice you get to enjoy this car. And that's what this car was built for. Nobody built this car and was like, all right, let's make it flat on the top so people can stand on the roof. No, that's not why these cars were designed. They were designed to have fun, to look good. And for some reason that attracts people that want to stand on them. And I will never for the life of me understand that. So if anyone's got a good reason other than Instagram, if that's what Instagram does for our world, then maybe we'd be better off without Instagram. Am I sounding old now? Because there was, was there a time before Instagram that everyone started climbing on Ferraris? Oh, look at that Mira, Joe, go stand on top of the hood so we could take a, a Polaroid. No, that was never a thing. Now it's a thing and it shouldn't be. All right, so just try not to scratch my cars anymore. Just enjoy them. Look at this. This thing looks super exotic. Like, look, compared to like, compared to these two cars, like that fits in pretty damn well. Chevy killed it. All right, that's all I got. See you tomorrow. Sorry about the uh, sorted thing. It'll be up tomorrow, Friday, four o'clock. See you then. So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, we're gonna be going to Scotland in October. We're gonna be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you wanna do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's gonna be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.